at this point, stroke is vastly, vastly undertreated. This is essentially a call to arms for cardiologists, vascular surgeons, interventional radiologists. Anybody who's willing to take call to take care of people with stroke need to handle this problem. There's 900,000 strokes a year in the U.S. Of those 900,000 strokes, you know, 85% of them are going to wind up being ischemic. If you wind up using our rigorous criteria that we use at Sanford and Fargo with, uh, with diffusion-weighted MRI, CT perfusion, what we find is we have 200,000 strokes that are eligible for, the, uh, for, for endovascular therapy. 200,000 peop people, 200,000 strokes. So when you think about that, how many neurointerventionalists are active right now? 500. We need thousands of people to take care of this. I mean, in North Dakota, we have five STEMI programs, one neurointerventional program. And that covers all of North Dakota. It covers South Dakota, in the upper part of South Dakota. It covers the western part of Minnesota. So it is vastly, vastly undertreated. A lot of places, stroke is just like, oh, oh you had a stroke, you're done. Send them upstairs. That should not be the case. It should be a stroke code, just like a STEMI code, every single one. And that's the way we practice in Fargo, North Dakota. And that's what our goal is, is to try and spread, try and spread this endovascular uh, talent, this endovascular technology that's now a class one technology around to areas that are underserved. You can't just take you know, a first year fellow out of an interventional cardiology program or radiology or vascular surgery and expect that they're going to be able to wiggle up there and do a stroke intervention. However, there's a lot of interventional cardiologists, vascular surgeons, interventional radiologists who have skills above the neck there. So they do cerebral angiograms. One of our requirements is to do 100 cerebral angiograms, make sure they have that experience so they know the anatomy. Next, can they handle putting a sheath up into the neck? That would mean that they need to do carotid stenting. So at least 25 carotid stents within a reasonable amount of time. And then in our program, we have 25 supervised stent retriever procedures. And that's, once, you, once you've completed that, then you're, 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 if, if you're talented enough and you're able to do it, then certainly you can go ahead and take interventional neurosurgery call. I think what's happened here is they're making it restrictive and they're pigeonholing this therapy and it's hurting the patients. We have this, we have this idea right now that, oh, everything's fine. Everybody's being well taken care of in my program. But you know what, your program isn't right down the street. Even in big cities, if, if, you're, if you're not right there on call, what's happening to grandma? You know what I mean? Who's taking care of her? A lot of times, nobody's taking care of her. She's allowed to infarct. She's given TPA, it doesn't work, and they say, oh, well, it's, she's outside the window. So I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of different factors at play here, you know, in terms of, in terms of uh, you know, trying to restrict who does it. I mean, hell, if you've got enough people to do it, go right ahead and restrict it, but you don't and there's 200,000 strokes. There's no way that you can take care of that on just the interventional neurosurgery side of things. You need to recruit help. I think the key next steps is that we need to be involved with the societies and, um, and we need to develop a protocol, a training protocol, a training program. You know, what's reasonable? And then get other people to buy into it and help train. We don't want to be the only ones in Fargo, North Dakota, training interventional cardiologists around the area to do stroke. We want everybody to be doing this. And then at some point, we're going to reach, you know what's going to happen? Is we're going to reach a cr critical mass. And the next thing you know, practice A and practice B are going to be competing with each other to say, we can do it faster. No, we can do it faster. And it's going to elevate the game. And next thing you know, you also have societies getting together and putting together guidelines in terms of what's the, what's the, you know, what's the door to CT scan, what's the door to needle time, what's the door to reperfusion time. All those things that we have in STEMI, we need for stroke. And you know, in my mind, stroke is you know, 10, 20 years behind the heart in terms of this. We finally have a good endovascular therapy. Let's, let's, let's put it out there. Let's promulgate it and have everybody else use it.